A very good morning to all of you. Excellencies, distinguished speakers and participants who are joining from different parts of the world. A very warm welcome to the UAE India Healthcare Conference 2020. Global challenges require a cohesive, sustained and coordinated response. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought healthcare to the forefront and highlighted the need for collaboration and partnerships between health systems across the world. Today, the global economy is being held hostage by this healthcare crisis, and we are witnessing a once in a lifetime kind of economic downturn. This conference, therefore, becomes all the more relevant and topical as the key stakeholders from the UAE India healthcare landscape join together to deliberate on exploring new avenues for partnership between the two countries. It is my privilege to introduce Ambassador of India to the UAE, His Excellency, Mr. Pavan Kapoor. Ambassador Kapoor has had a long, distinguished diplomatic career spanning almost three decades, during which he has served with distinction in several assignments at the headquarters and the Indian missions abroad. More recently, he has served as India's High Commissioner to Mozambique and the Kingdom of Swaziland, and subsequently as Ambassador of India to Israel. May I now request Ambassador Pavan Kapoor to please deliver the opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Aman, and uh, good morning and welcome to everybody else uh, who's joined in. Uh, lots of familiar faces and uh, we've just had the occasion to say brief hellos, but good morning and uh, namaste to everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be able to participate in this conference, which I hope will be an important platform to explore areas of cooperation in healthcare between India and the UAE in both the public and private sectors. The presence of uh, such an array of uh, personnel, key personnel from both uh, India and UAE is a clear indication of the importance that we all attach to it. The timing of this meeting is also apt, and it's a natural progression of the ongoing collaboration between our countries during uh, to tackle uh, uh, to try and tackle the pandemic. From the start of the pandemic, the leadership on both sides continued their interactions and gave necessary guidance to deepen cooperation in the pharma and healthcare sectors. India ensured the supply of vital medicines to UAE and Indian medical personnel assisted UAE authorities in the fight against COVID-19. UAE too sent necessary medical supplies to India and has taken very good care of the Indian community residing in the UAE. These contributions are recognized by both sides. Not just the UAE, but the world has been witness to the vital role played by the Indian pharmaceutical sector in meeting the unprecedented demand for medicines from across the globe. Since the outbreak of the pandemic, India has ensured uninterrupted supply of critical medicines to more than 150 countries across the world to treat COVID-19 patients. India caters to the vaccine requirements of two thirds of children across the world. It is expected that the bulk of manufacturing capacity of India's vaccine manufacturers will play a crucial role in ensuring the widespread availability of the COVID-19 vaccine, no matter which vaccine is finally approved after phase three trials for bulk usage in the world. In fact, our prime minister made a special mention of this during his address to the UNGA last month, where he spoke about using our capacity for the benefit of humanity with regard to this vaccine. But while vigorous efforts are underway to find the suitable vaccine for COVID-19, the importance of a low cost effective test is also crucial in the shorter term, as well as relevant in the longer term, especially for developing international travel protocols, which is something which is becoming more important as we go along to open up economies. In this regard, the recently developed Feluda paper-based test in India, which almost matches accuracy levels of the RT-PCR test and has a turnaround time of just 45 minutes, is an indicator 
of the kind of innovation that we are capable of doing in the healthcare sector. As it is, the Indian pharmaceutical and healthcare industry is one of the largest, most advanced and well-recognized industry in the world. The pharmaceutical companies manufacture bulk drugs belonging to several therapeutical needs and have developed state-of-art infrastructure for production of all dosage forms. With excellent infrastructure and production setup, the prices of Indian medicines are also one of the lowest in the world. Indian companies maintain the highest standards in international SHE requirements, namely safety, health, and environmental production, uh, protection in their production processes. Policy initiatives of the Indian government are also encouraging greater research and development in the pharma sector. I'm happy to note that some leading pharma companies of India have increased their R&D spending to over 8% of their turnover. The vision of Atmanirbhar Bharat or a self-reliant India and the call of make in India and make for the world by our Prime Minister has a particular focus on the pharmaceutical sector and medical equipment manufacturers. You may be surprised to know that within a short span of just 60 days of the outbreak of the pandemic, Indian companies had built capacities to produce essential material to handle the COVID-19 pandemic, like oxygenation and ventilation equipment, PPE kits and N95 masks. This resulted in not only meeting our domestic demand, but also enabled exports to many other countries in need. As you are aware, Indian healthcare providers contribute almost 70 to 80 percent of total healthcare services in the UAE. The government of UAE is in fact making efforts to further improve the attractiveness of the UAE as a destination for medical tourism and also as a hub for manufacture and distribution of pharmaceutical products. In a recent meeting that I had with the head of Department of Health of Abu Dhabi, I was told of their strong interest in setting up manufacturing facilities for vaccines and even for generic medicines. They are particularly keen to look at Indian companies, especially those with a strong R&D base, who would be willing to set up such facilities here. They will provide incentives, including financial contributions, and will also make efforts to create a full ecosystem to support such healthcare manufacturing companies from India. I would urge Indian pharmaceutical and manufacturing companies to consider this offer since the UAE is looking not just to becoming a hub for such products in the GCC region, but also looking at markets for these products in Africa and even Europe. On the other hand, to bring down healthcare delivery costs in the UAE, India can be a significant partner in terms of supply of pharmaceutical products and other surgical consumables. There is a huge opportunity for the UAE to invest in India, where seven mega parks, three in the pharmaceutical sector, and four in medical devices have recently been announced. At the government level, the Pradhan Mantri Jan Arogya Yojana is the world's largest government-sponsored health insurance scheme. And the National Digital Health Mission of India aims to revolutionize digital healthcare for all. I'm glad that the Dubai Health Authority is already having discussions with the National Health Authority of India about this health insurance scheme and the opportunities it may offer to the UAE. Our two governments can also collaborate in supporting the health systems of both countries through capacity building. And finally, the introduction of the Ayush systems of traditional Indian medicine can also be used to complement the health system in the UAE especially given the large Indian population in this country, which is not only well-versed with the system, but extremely open to using it. I look forward to hearing the views and suggestions from the senior representatives of the health systems of the UAE and India, from the government as well as the private sector, and wish all of you a very productive conference. Thank you. Acha. तो आप क्या हमारे वाले सेशन में आप ओके ओके ओके
कौन सुन ले थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू इनवाइट हिज एक्सीलेंसी उमेद अल कतामी द डायरेक्टर जनरल ऑफ दुबई हेल्थ अथॉरिटी टू शेयर हिज व्यूज हिज एक्सीलेंसी उमेद अल कतामी हेज सर्व एज द मिनिस्टर ऑफ एजुकेशन फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड नाइन टू टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन एंड एज यू ए मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड सिक्स टू टू थाउजेंड नाइन ओवर टू यू एक्सीलेंसी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू सुबह अखेर जमी Your Excellency, Mr. Mohammad Kapoor, Ambassador of Thank India you, to the UAE. I would now like to invite His Excellency Humaid Al Kapoor to share his views. His Excellency Humaid Al Kapoor has served as Minister of Education from 2009 to 2014, and as UAE Minister of Health from 2006 to 2009. over to you excellency thank you thank you excellency uh, good morning to all of you as excellency mr wabal kapoor the ambassador of india to the uae as excellency dr ahmed al banna ambassador of the uae to india honorable guest good morning It gives me a great pleasure today to address the conference, the UAE India Healthcare Conference. I would like to express my thanks and appreciation to all of you for bringing the value event into existing. We believe. We believe that the conference is considering an important occasion to develop and enhance a sustainable partnership between Dubai Health Authority and the healthcare institution uh, in India. The UAE India relationship is based on long strong foundation that are deeply rooted in history collaboration between the uae and india over several sectors the healthcare sector has been receiving a considerable attention however still there are a lot of a new area for collaboration between our healthcare institution Those area include the integrating healthcare system, modern technology and smart solution, innovation diagnosis and preventive and treatment methods, healthcare investment, health tourism, vaccination, training and medical education, and significant research. and many other areas i think and i believe this conference will be the right forum to establish channel to achieve the common goals for our for the healthcare sector for both two countries i will also be the a right venue to share and exchange knowledge and experience we are very delighted for having the opportunity to know closely and depth a lot of details of india medical experience we are today we are happy that many indian healthcare institutional have this decided to establish business in dubai and they managed to become important partners in providing healthcare services we look forward 
to have a great and fruitful collaboration in favor of our countries and our people. Finally, I would like to wish this conference all of the success in exploring and building a new horizon for our collaboration. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Excellency. And I would like to take this opportunity to also thank you for all the support and participation which we are receiving from the Dubai Health Authority in all our endeavors. Thank you so much. Welcome. Now, now I would like to invite His Excellency, Dr. Ahmed Albana, Ambassador of UAE to India. Dr. Albana, a great friend of India, as he served as Director, African Affairs Department, and also as Director, Department of Economic Affairs in the UAE Ministry of Foreign Affairs. India and UAE have cooperated closely during the current pandemic, where Dr. Albana has played a pivotal role. I now invite Excellency to address the gathering. Thank you very much, uh, Consul General. Um, Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Hamid Al Qattami, and uh, Your Excellency, Ambassador Pavan Kapoor, my fellow colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to take uh, a minute to thank. Uh, Ambassador Pavan Kapoor and Consul General uh, for uh, organizing this India Healthcare Conference. I would like also to thank uh, Fiki uh, for being part of this organization. And uh, actually, this is my uh, second time in, in, a, in a week uh, with a platform with Fiki. Uh, on, a, on a webinar uh, on a similar uh, subject. The, uh, this virtual summit uh, is the most appropriate and has been held at the most appropriate time to address and deliberate the possibilities of the uh, pertinent uh, topics in healthcare, especially and the healthcare bilaterals between the United Arab Emirates and the Republic of India. Over the course of today, I hope that constructively we will engage and uh, with the rest of my fellow, fellow colleagues uh, to exchange ideas and foster this uh, relationship. Uh, COVID-19 has altered the dynamic of our global economic ecosystem. The pandemic has triggered the largest economic shockwave felt across the globe since the Great Depression, both in terms of intensity and spread. However, COVID-19, while posing many challenges for countries, has also unlocked doors for fast pay strategic thinking and proactive, innovative measures. To effectively tackle such unprecedented health and economic crisis, the world required, requires a new kind of approach, one that fosters cooperation and not isolation amongst all stakeholders. I am certain my fellow panelists will handle and will look into the different aspects of this uh, pandemic. To sum it up, I think united we stand, divided we fall. <clears throat> I also firmly believe that COVID-19 would make an era of paradigm shift in the realm of diplomacy. This will be the era of soft power 
with healthcare medical diplomacy taking a center stage. We have seen and we have experienced it and we are looking at it that healthcare and the health platform is one of the most important platform in everyone's, everybody's, every country's uh, uh, economy, uh, system, whatever you call it. In terms of our healthcare system, we are proud to host some of the best healthcare facilities and professionals from across the world. To date, healthcare in the UAE has been funded and supported mainly by the government. The UAE and its modernization and path of reform is now evolving this funding to focus on the increasingly important public-private partnership. The UAE is working with the leading global institutions to further develop its healthcare system. The UAE seeks to become a major center for world-class healthcare in the Middle East for not only its residents, but those in the whole region, in the MENA region. The UAE has also been known out of the box thinking, and one such testimony of that is one simple program, and that is the waterfall initiatives and uh, the continuous uh, education from UAE to the world. Uh, we have my colleague, uh, Mr. Abd Salam Al Madani, who will be speaking about the uh, waterfalls initiative uh, from the UAE. Uh, the, the first country, or many of first, that has visionary and pragmatic leadership. We were able to contain the spread of this deadly virus early on. And of course, my um, uh, His Excellency Hamid Al Qatami and our Ministry of uh, Health in the UAE and all the health institutions has created the protocols uh, that to be implemented, of course, with the higher committee for the crisis and disasters. Uh, they created plat protocols and how to deal with this pandemic. And we were very successful in uh, the dealing of this uh, pandemic. Even as we take aggressive action at home to fight the spread of COVID-19 virus, the UAE has become a lending hand to other countries. Uh, the UAE uh, responded to COVID-19 crisis by providing more than 1,500 metric tons of aid to more than 118 countries supporting more than 1 million medical professionals in, in this process of fighting the pandemic. In the last four and a half years that I have, or almost five years that I have spent uh, in a time in India as ambassador of UAE, I have had a pleasure to experience uh, the bilateral ties between UAE and India to escalate to a never seen before on specifically a strategic uh, level. As I gather my thoughts on the impact of COVID-19, Einstein famous line comes to mind. In the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. In the wake of COVID-19 pandemic situation, the new dimension of the medical diplomacy has indeed further blustered the strategic partnership between the United Arab Emirates and India. Even during the current pandemic, there were several exchanges between the leadership uh, of UAE uh, and India. Exchanges of telephone calls, exchanges of uh, private meetings uh, on many different levels. The UAE 
sent as Ambassador uh, Kapoor mentioned uh, tons of medical supplies uh, to India on May 2nd. Uh, we have uh, imported uh, medicines from India and we were able to get special permissions for the consignments of the uh, uh, hydro uh, chloroquine and the hydroxychloroquine and also we were able to get special permissions for medical staff nurses and uh, medical staff overall to come to the uae to support uh, our existing uh, healthcare uh, platform the indian government assisted and facilitated through the embassy and the, consul gen uh, the consulate general of India, the repatriations of uh, Indians uh, from uh, the UAE to India. And also we work very closely with the Ministry of External Affairs of India in the process of repatriation of our own UAE nationals in the second week of uh, uh, April uh, from uh, India to, uh, to UAE. We enjoy a unique strat strategic relationship with India, and it is our constant endeavor to further deepen and diversify this opportunity by adopting different innovative and innovative approaches and opening up newer areas of mutual cooperation. The presence of all of you here is a testimony of the fact that there exists huge untapped potential for mutual collaboration and partnership between the UAE and India in the field of healthcare, in the field of medicine and related uh, sectors of healthcare. With several factors contributing to the rediscovery of India-UAE relationship, I firmly believe we are of interesting times. We have interesting times ahead of us. It is my firm belief that this, this multifaceted and time-tested partnership is set to lead the world by example in the post of COVID-19. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to be, to be amongst you in this platform. And I wish the organizers and I wish all the panelists all the uh, best of luck and thank you all. Thank you so much, Excellency. Indeed. As you rightly said, medical diplomacy has added a whole new dimension to diplomatic relations between countries and India and UAE as two very close countries sharing brotherly relationship would be setting an example for the rest of the world in how to collaborate and how to partner for the benefit of peoples on both sides. Thank you so much indeed. It is now my pleasure to introduce his Excellency Abdullah Ali Al Mahyan, who heads the Sharjah Health Authority and Sharjah Healthcare City as the chairman of both authorities. He's also a member of the Sharjah Executive Council and chairman of the Board of Trustees of Sharjah University Hospital. I now invite His Excellency Al Mahyan to please say a few words and address the gathering. Chairman, Your Excellencies, Indian Ambassador, Council General, my colleagues of various UAE health authorities and ministry, our Ambassador to India and all other dignitaries. Good morning. Uh, and greeting from the Sharjah Health Authority. It is my pleasure to attend this special conference on UAE India healthcare and thank you, Your Excellency, for the kind invitation. As all of us know, 
Indian owned healthcare services contribute the main of the UAE's healthcare for decades, and the trend is continuous. The private sector investment in healthcare in the Emirates of Sharjah also marked by the Indian investor. UAE shared historic relationship with the India in almost all the fields, and healthcare is no exception. Charter Health Authority, under the guidance of His Highness Dr. Sheikh Sultan bin Mohammed Al Qasim, being part of the strong healthcare governing system of the United Arab Emirates, continuously eye for the better result for a healthcare community and willing to collaborate with the nation, share the same vision. Let me take this opportunity to congratulate the Indian Embassy and the Consulate in UAE and their counterparts in India for taking up this initiative of healthcare collaboration between the two friendly nations and further boom for existing bilateral cooperation between them. We all know that healthcare is the much talked about subject of today, given the reason of ongoing pandemic world over. All of us learn that the future of healthcare is about sharing and collaborating between knowledge and human expertise. We at Sharjah Health Authority willing to tie up with these initiatives by India and their health authorities that unitedly bring good results to the entire mankind. On behalf of the government of Sharjah and the health authority, let me wish this conference all the very best and extend all the support for the, all the attendants and the audience. Thank you all, and thank you again. Thank you so much, Excellency. And I would like to take this opportunity to also thank you for the tremendous support which we are receiving uh, from the Sharjah Health Authority and from all government authorities in the Emirate of Sharjah, where we have a very large uh, Indian community as well. Thank you so much. I would now like to introduce His Excellency Dr. Amin Al Amiri, Assistant Undersecretary of Health Policy and Licensing in UAE Ministry of Health and Prevention. Dr. Al Amiri received his PhD and MSc in Medical Science in 2003 from the Faculty of Medicine, Aberdeen University in Scotland. He is responsible for various departments like drug empowerment and health compliance organization, licenses, and advertisement, and public health policies. I now welcome His Excellency, Dr. Al Amiri. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of the most merciful God. Your Excellency, Mr. Hamid al Ghatami, Your Excellency, uh, Mr. Dr. Ahmed al Banna, Your Excellency, the Ambassador, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Pravan Kapoor, ladies and gentlemen, it's my profound honor and pleasure to be with you. I will start my speech in uh, giving evidence and documents to prove the uh, the most eminent and strategic partnership between the government of the United Arab Emirates and India. My speech uh, uh, with my presentation. Allow me just one minute to share with you uh, my presentation. Is my presentation clear to all of you? Ladies and gentlemen, in fact, always we value the human being and the wish of our uh, profound government of United Arab Emirates is the investment on the human being. And therefore, the human beings, their ideas, their innovation, their dreams, 
their connections are the capital of the future for each single country and wherever they go, it happens a great success by tomorrow. And this is what His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Vice President, Prime Minister, ruler of Dubai said that human beings is the capital of any of the countries and great things will happen wherever those people tomorrow goes. And as His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Citizens uh, uh, is the focus uh, of development and the main pillar uh, for achieving the progress, the prog I mean, the prosperity, development, and advancement of any each single country. And therefore, let me share with you by the visions of our government the successes which rises the standard of the healthcare and pharma industry in the United Arab Emirates and give you some of the uh, examples. If I will talk about why the swift rise in the UAE healthcare sector, there are many reasons behind growing population, and this is a worldwide issue, and the, the size of uh, uh, life expectancy, uh, despite the vision of the best quality of health services, which is, uh, uh, this is the vision of the government that to provide the highest standard of quality of care to our patients, and to make sure that all our hospitals, the governmental and the private, will be accredited either by JCI or Canadian or Australian international accreditation body. And therefore, we have almost 89% uh, of our hospitals are accredited. And as per the initiative of the federal government of the UAE, that by end of 2020, 100% of our hospitals has to be accredited by JCI or one of the international accreditation body. Despite that, the government investment invested in education and the highest level of education you have, then their expectation will rise. And therefore, their expectation has to go parallel with the high standard of healthcare services provided to them, to this beautiful country, to the people who live in beautiful country. And we are the most global country in the world, which we have close to 200 nationalities living in peace in this beautiful country. And therefore, their expected demand is rising. Despite that, the increased burden of the non-communicable diseases, which is the NCDs, and the, uh, uh, the, the, the release of the, of the, of the uh, I mean, the, uh, the new legislations of the UAE for the last four years, 32 new legislations which supports the r and in UAE, supports the new innovative uh, initiatives to be in UAE, and it supports and attracts the largest pharma and medical industry to join us. And as per the, uh, the fish, fish Solutions is, is the, the new name of uh, IQ here, that the healthcare investment in UAE for, by 2020 reached to 61.7 billion US dollar, and it has been forecasted, uh, expected to reach 89.2 billion US dollar by 2024. And this is a great uh, evidence uh, that uh, it's a, there, there are a chance and opportunities in UAE to open new hospitals, having a strategic partnership with international and regional hospitals to open and have their base in UAE. And later on, I will share with you some of the examples. If I will shift from the medical to the pharma industry, which His Excellency, the Indian ambassador was emphasizing, and our ambassador, Dr. Ahmed al Banna, emphasizing in the good relationship between the both governments and the pharma industry, this is one of the examples and evidence from uh, uh, IQV again that the the rise of the of the pharmaceutical market value is increasing uh, rapidly, and by 2020, the almost 13 billion US uh, 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 sorry 13 billion UAE dirhams would be the the value of the pharma market, and it is being expected to reach almost close to 18 billion uh, UAE dirhams. Uh, by uh, 2024, which is a near future. Now, such improvements wants an infrastructure. Now, infrastructure is not only the airports, the free zone areas, the, the, the connections to the rest of the governments, but on the top of it is the legislations, how the legislation of your government will allow the new investments, how allow the attraction of the medical tourism, to the UAE, how it will allow the new R&D to be introduced, how will, will, will support the medical tourism, how will support the medical liability, 
and the recently the uh, the impact of the new law for organ transplant in UAE. And let me share with you the number of the new legislations which was uh, either released by His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the president of the of the country, or the ministerial decree by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid as the 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 I mean the prime minister. And if you will look on this chart from 2017 by, until 2020, we had almost 32 number of the new laws, new legislation has been released to support the healthcare and pharma industry in UAE. And this, in fact, leaded by uh, the, the different health authorities, either the Ministry of Health and Prevention or Dubai Health Authority or Abu Dhabi Department of Health or Dubai Healthcare City or Sharjah Healthcare City or the presidential office of His Highness, to whom they run four hospitals in UAE, in fact, to introduce the new, and the new innovations in UAE as a first country at the middle of the all of the of the of the Middle East, like Da Vinci, that's a robotic uh, te technique for open heart surgery, the a new uh, robotic for PCI, and some of the tele ICU services. By the way, UAE were pioneer worldwide to implement the telemedicine. I do remember. Uh, I was the coordinator with Professor Gora from Mayo Clinic in the state, which we started the first telemedicine in 1994. That was in Al Matra Hospital, Abu Dhabi. Really, there was laws, regulations, support, and the vision of the government needed that our hospitals to be the best worldwide. And this is the report which was released by the chairman of JCI. JCI stands for Joint Commission International, and that was in January uh, 2019 that UAE has the highest number of the governmental and the private hospitals accredited outside United of United States of America. We have 191 hospitals accredited by JCI and almost, as I said earlier, 88% of our governmental and private hospitals by end of 2019 were accredited by, by the JCI or the Canadian. This was the, the, the pillar to lead the strategic partnership between UAE hospitals with international hospitals. Let me share with you some of the examples. On the right side, we have Sheikh Khalifa Medical City in Ajman, which is run by Global Health from Sweden. Sheikh Khalifa Specialist Hospital in Ras Al Khaimah, which is run, managed by Seoul National University Hospital from South Korea. We have Cleveland Abu Dhabi is a model, which we have organ transplant there. So far, we had eight number of heart transplant, nine uh, uh, lung transplant, and seven uh, uh, liver transplant, the, the, despite the hundreds of kidney transplant from, from the cadavers. So far, we had 25 cadavers in the UAE, which is the, the, the deceased donor, and we are very active in this. And we have six hospitals accredited for organ transplant, like Cleveland Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Khalifa Hospital in Abu Dhabi, Dubai Hospital, we have a Qasimi Hospital in Sharjah, City Hospital and private hospital in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, Dubai, and also a Jalil Hospital for the uh, uh, pediatric kidney transplant. We have an American hospital in Dubai, which they have an affiliation with Mayo Clinic. We have a Qasimi Hospital, which the emergency unit is being managed by, by Health Canada. This is the, the success and prosperity of our government in, in having a strategic partnership as a PPP, which is a, a private-public partnership with the healthcare, healthcare services, but not even that. Let me share with you this slide, which is a heavy slide, but it's very informative because we have a great uh, uh, re, I mean, strategic relationship with the Indian pharma industry. UAE is the most uh, biggest hub for, uh, to host the, the international pharma companies. Uh, I do remember in 2014, we have 47, Scientific officers are presenting international pharma companies. By 2020, we have 83, by the way. They do represent the most international pharma companies, and they have, out of 83, 25 of them, they have the logistic hub. We support from UAE only, from Dubai, 41 countries during the pandemic situation. Not even my beautiful country, but the rest of the countries, 41 countries, did not suffer from shortage in medication or sanitizers or the PPEs because we're supported from the United Arab Emirates. On the left side is the number of the factories. We have so far 19 factories producing 1,600 uh, different SKUs of medicines. And we were pushing as a Ministry of Health and Prevention 
the international pharma companies to introduce the innovative medicine in UAE. We have seven MOUs. We uh, introduced 106 uh, different innovative medicines supporting all the region, MENA region, which is Middle East, North and Africa, with 106 different SKUs of medicines in UAE. And therefore, there's a lot of chances that the pharma industry from India, from the uh, rest of the world to come and, and join us. Uh, we had, since the beginning, uh, a strategic role in working with the Indian government to support the, 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 the pharma industry. I will share with you the pharma and the medical. This is one of the examples at the left side. We have almost above 2,300 uh, uh, medicines registered uh, uh, different uh, conventional, uh, uh, sorry, I mean the uh, manufacturing side, which is the factory, 2,300 factories from different countries in the world registered in UAE, but out of it, 230, uh, 236 factories from India, which stands of total 10% of the total factories we are dealing with worldwide. On the right side is the registered medical products, almost close to 10,000. It's a big number of it. It's again, uh, it is, it is from uh, from India. Uh, below, uh, despite the total number of the medicines, 10% uh, of com uh, conventional medicines from India, and on the top of it, 26% uh, of the natural source medicine, it's from India, and 6% it's from India from the others, which stands for the biological medicine and uh, the, the biosimilars. If I will talk about the importation and the export, in fact, uh, uh, the majority of importation from India is the uh, medical device and diagnostic kits, which is in the green uh, green color, and uh, the the red one is the uh, the the uh, I mean the uh, the medicines, despite the uh, the raw materials, which is in the green one, which is the majority. Now the red and the blue, it is the devices or the medicines, but. The green one, which is in the top of it, is the raw materials, and therefore the majority of our factories they depend upon importation of the raw materials from India to produce the 1,600 of different uh, medicines in the UAE, either innovative or the um, the I mean the uh, the uh, the generic one. If I would talk the health professionals, uh, really uh, we have a huge number of Indians as health professionals, either doctors, nurses. Uh, medical allied, which uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, I mean, the green one is the governmental sector, 30% of our staff are from India, the private hospital, 42% are from India, and this is the classification of the physicians, and then pharmacists, dentists, nursing, and the technicians, which is for the other lab technicians. We have a great uh, cooperation with India, and therefore, the chances are more Opportunities are there, and we look forward to support any Indian pharma industry or medical industry to come and join us in this beautiful country and to invest with us either full uh, ownership or investment with some of the existing hospitals or chain hospitals or chain uh, factories or the pharma factories. We look uh, uh, after the new innovative ideas, we look after new innovations, we look after R&D, and this is the wish of his Highness Sheikh Hamad um, Rashid Al Maktoum, that innovation is what defines our status among the nations and the value that we add to the world around us that to become one of the best worldwide in different sectors, especially in medical and pharma, which is the, 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 the most important two sectors for the human being's life. Ladies and gentlemen, it was my profound honor to be with you and thank you very much. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Excellency, for a very comprehensive presentation and for your support to the conference. I would now like to introduce Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, the Joint Managing Director of the Apollo Hospitals Group and the president of the Federation of the Chambers of Commerce and Industry. She is a member of the World Economic Forum and has been nominated by the Government of India as a member of the Technology Development Board, Department of Science and Technology. She has held various positions of eminence, which I'm sure all of you are familiar with. I would like to take this opportunity and extend my gratitude 
for Fiki's partnership in organizing today's conference. And before I hand over the floor to Dr. Sangeeta Reddy, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the extraordinary contribution made by Dr. Pratap Reddy, founder chairman of the Apollo Group, who basically pioneered private healthcare sector in India. Over to you, ma'am. So good afternoon, good morning, and namaste. It is indeed a great pleasure to be amongst all of you today, leaders in one of the most important areas, which is healthcare. And I think at no time in the world has healthcare become as center stage as it is today. At no time in the world have world leaders congregated, debated, and focused their attention on this new healthcare. So I'm privileged this morning to be discussing with all of you. Uh, thank you, Council General, for that kind introduction. Uh, to His Excellency, Mr. Humed Khatami, His Excellency, Mr. Pavan Kapoor, His Excellency, Dr. Ahmed Albani, Albana, and it is a pleasure to see you again. Your address at both conferences were outstanding. Uh, your uh, Excellency, Dr. Amin Al-Amiri, his Excellency Abdullah Ali Mayan and all other significant participants, participants in today's program, including those from the private sector, both in the UAE and from India. Uh, I see Dr. Shamsher, I, I see uh, Girish, many, many other participants. I want to welcome you all. I want to thank uh, the government of UAE and the government of India for this opportunity for FIKI, but also most importantly to thank you for the thought leadership of bringing this session together because there is much to be done. But we start from a good position. We start from a position of shared values, of shared values on the importance of human life and the importance to reach out and use the knowledge, the strength and the capability we have to serve our countrymen and to serve other countries, as has been beautifully explained uh, by all of you and very inspiring the number of countries that you have supported during the pandemic. A similar ideology is with India. And uh, so we start from a concept of shared values. We continue from a concept of a shared goal and that shared and common goal is to keep our citizens happy to help give the world better solutions towards healthcare. And there could be no better time for us to be discussing this. We're coming together at a time of a changing environment. And this changing environment is putting stress and a certain degree of stress unleashes the innovation capacity. And it is said that we should never waste a crisis. So this, in my mind, is a very important meeting of people with common shared ideologies to innovate, to collaborate, and to find new solutions. And while the, uh, the catalyst for bringing us together has been the COVID, I believe that we are not really in the middle of a pandemic, but as was rightly quoted by the editor of Lancet, this is a tridemic. The first epidemic, is the epidemic of COVID, which has struck the world in this unprecedented manner, affecting health and economies of nations. The second is an underlying epidemic, which has exasperated the situation, which is the epidemic of non-communicable disease, which the entire world is facing. And we all know that those with comorbidities of diabetes, of cancer, of cardiac, had higher mortality. Their ability to fight this pandemic became less. So we must strengthen the health of our overall communities so that we can face if such things come back to us again. And the third is a pandemic or an infodemic where there is this series of information. Do we take hydrochloroquine on? Is remdesivir the cure? There is, and then everything from home remedies to scientifically appropriate remedies like uh, sleeping prone and the evolution of this knowledge is so fast and so intense, but also so life-saving. So this ability to collate the right information, to jointly research and build the care protocols on a minute-to-minute -minute basis so that we may collectively save lives. This changing environment is really, again, what is bringing us together. 
but we approach it from a position of strength, as was beautifully put together in the presentation by Dr. Uh, Amiri. We have capabilities. You have uh, uh, a commitment to telemedicine, which has been there for a very long time, and uh, India has the very same. We have enacted uh, the Telemedicine Act, uh, and I come from my, my primary organization, Apollo Hospital, started its journey with telemedicine almost 20 years ago. And today we have among the largest networks in the world doing not just teleconsults, but EICU, telepathology, teleradiology, e-emergency, so that we can put skilled people, but not the highest level, onto the sites where they're needed immediately, but connect them with the greatest of knowledge using this. Because indeed, biology, which is the genome and the way the body works, bytes, which is the computational capacity, and bandwidth is changing the world of healthcare. We are coming together to use these changing environments to create new solutions. And we're coming, as Dr. Albana said, at a time where our relationship is multifaceted, our leaders work well together, our countries work well together, our people work well together. It's multifaceted and time-tested partnership. So this is the era of medical diplomacy. Let us explore what can we do together in the manpower realm so that both countries benefit and benefit well. And for this, may I please put, to get, put forward our first request is that individuals and professionals who are accredited in India, and you may create another tier if you would like, those from hospitals who have received Joint Commission accreditation, which is very similar to yours, or a certain certification, if they may be automatically recognized for services in your country, in your beautiful country, I think this will accelerate the pace of collaboration. I move on to say on the medicine or the pharmaceutical area, a lot is being done, but I believe that the ratios of the numbers can be far more. I move on to say that beyond medicines and manpower, are working together on planning, design, innovation, research, software. I, our gentleman from TCS is here. Each one of these areas can help us capture the power, whether it's artificial intelligence, which will combine our data together to create automatic care pathways and protocols and AI-enabled treatment scenarios. I could go on on this subject, and each of you are equally impassioned. But I will just uh, end or conclude by saying that as the world fights COVID as a collective force, this is an opportune time for us to identify collaborations. Uh, Fiki is honored to be part of this program today. We look forward to furthering this from beyond a conference to partnership discussions, firm collaborations, and putting action on the ground which will impact people because ultimately that's what we all want and that's where we began. So hospitals, pharmaceuticals, health insurance, Ayush, sharing of platforms. Uh, the Apollo brought to India, but actually to Asia and to this part of the world, uh, the first proton machine. So can we find a way to collaborate on things like this? Where do we do this joint collaboration? Uh, sir, you spoke of transplant. We are today in India, uh, the world's largest transplant program. So can we find methodologies to collaborate again on Ayush, research, investment, finding the healthcare synergies? Because the healthcare opportunity in India is over 375 billion. And our prime minister, as was rightly observed by Ambassador Pavan Kapoor, uh, we are on an ambitious mission of ensuring and bringing universal health coverage for over 500 million people, which will be uh, larger than the population of America and Europe combined. But we will use this knowledge, we will apply these insights, and we will evolve new treatment methodologies which we can share with the world. So let us find ways to engage, to collaborate. We come from a position of deep respect of the tremendous beauty, infrastructure, capability, design, uh, that you have put and transformed your nation. And we are very uh, appreciative of your incredible planning capacity. We invite healthcare professionals from both India and UAE to join this thought-provoking conference to deliberate over the day so that we can help transform the way we deliver care as it is moving from the hospital to the clinic, from the clinic to the home, 
from the home to a 24 by 7 ubiquitous access to care enabled by technology and the mobile phone. Startups, mobile solutions, backended by AI, ML, Internet of Medical Things, all these in the next decade will give us a new shape of healthcare. Let's dream, design, and build that together because we are all committed to that which is priceless, and that is the human body and humanity at large. So thank you very much. Good afternoon and all the very best. Namaste. Thank you so much, Dr. Sangeeta Reddy. Uh, your passion and enthusiasm is truly infectious. And I'm absolutely certain that uh, this is a journey where we will be promoting and we will be catalyzing more partnerships between uh, counterparts uh, in the private and the public sector of UAE and India. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Abdul Salam Al Madani, Chairman of Index Holdings and Executive Chairman of the Waterfalls Initiative, a global project from the UAE Ministry of Possibilities, Department of Behavioral Rewards and Index Holding for Continuous Education in Healthcare from UAE to the World. Over to you, Dr. Al Madani. Thank you very much, Dr. Puri, for inviting me to be part of this panelist. And I would like to appreciate and thanks to His Excellency Pavan Kapoor, the Indian Ambassador to UAE, and uh, also Your Excellency Mr. Hamed Al Ghutami, Director General, Department of Health, uh, Dubai Health Authority. Sorry, uh, and Your Excellency uh, Dr. Amiri, and thanks for uh, Dr. Ahmed Al Banna, our Ambassador, His Excellency Dr. Ahmed Al Banna, who is always encouraging. Uh, me to be part of such kind of uh, initiative uh, to bring the the business together uh, with India. And it is not first time I participate with the support and uh, our uh, ambassador, uh, Dr. Albanna. And last time he invited me to be there in uh, New Delhi to deliver the speech in cooperation with FICCI, which we can see now on the screen. So they are really great partner. Uh, as uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed, uh, Ministry of Foreign, always he mentioned the economy is first, then the other relation. So from there, I think we will take to the talking little bit about the Waterfalls Initiative, which is global uh, initiative by United Arab Emirates, which has been announced by by His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, the Vice President, uh, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, uh, announced this very excellent initiative for the continued education program with CME from UAE to the world in uh, support and direct supervision by His Highness Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior for such kind of uh, uh, activity in cooperation with INDEX and the Ministry of the Possibility, Department of Behavior Reward. This initiative is a very excellent opportunity during the COVID-19 to deliver the education uh, to the old our front line, line, not only in UAE, not in the region, in the world. So till now we have our 200 uh, speaker worldwide and we have uh, uh, participant more than 70,000 till now within this short period of time, which we are aim aiming to reach the 1 million uh, health professional. Uh, last two weeks, we had a great meeting between uh, myself and uh, Dr. Ahmed Al Banna uh, and also the Dr. Uh, uh, Aman Puri, the, that to how to involve the Indian doctors 
to be participate as a speaker as well, and also to have a benefit from the this important initiative. I think the, there are a lot of synergy between the uh, Indian doctors and also UAE doctors, and also they, they know our culture very well, and they have a lot of investment in UAE and in healthcare, uh, such as uh, we can see in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, a state of art of the private sector, which is invested by, by Indian investor, which we appreciated to encourage the, the, the medical tourism uh, from all over to United Arab. Although I believe the Indian was the first destination for us, at least I remember, uh, to be the first destination uh, to receive the medical tourism. I think they start for the, at least for the UAE and Gulf country. So hopefully this synergy and this relation, uh, which very close in culture and um, understanding uh, very well the India, a uh, lot of direct flight, short destination to increase this, to have a maximum benefit. As you know, the Gulf country, our five billion dollar, they are investing in medical tourism. So at least the India has to have a more share on this. So this can be done if we work better, work together between the, uh, the, the private sector of India to be involved uh, more to encourage also the, the benefit for both uh, India and UAE. So there are a lot of opportunity here and I take this opportunity healthcare to participate in this uh, global uh, initiative, which is water, waterfalls. At the same time, also to increase the relation uh, between the UAE and the uh, India in healthcare, because there are a lot of opportunities still is going on, and there are a lot, lot of opportunity to come. And uh, uh, my colleague and my friend, Dr. Amiri, he did a great uh, presentation which explained everything. I don't want to, to go details on that because cut it, I shortcut it, my presentation, because he did a great uh, uh, statistic and information based on the fact. So there are a lot of opportunity for the uh, Indian business people to come to UAE to have maximum benefit of this. And this, this go due to the, the relation. History go back to our father and, and uh, and grandfather, how he started the business in India. You know, I remember my father when and grandfather, how they started the first destination, what our business was in India and textile and uh, food stuff and rice and so many things they, they import. Till now, the index uh, holding uh, by the index trading and uh, trading uh, company, LLC, which we have a very good relation with uh, India and we need to incre increase this re business relation. I think I blame myself, you know. I should have an office in, in India, as we index holding has an office in many places in the world. From maybe more than 16 years, we have office, the first UAE uh, company in, in, in Korea, in Singapore, in London, in Germany, in USA. But India, I blame myself, I think. I need to work very, more hard. Very uh, soon, Delhi and Mumbai, Mumbai, very soon. <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Excellency. So I think with your uh, support and also the, our colleague in FICCI, uh, I think we can do a better job. Thank you very much once again for inviting me and thank you very, very much for all uh, participants and also panelists uh, to give this uh, opportunity to be together and listen to each other and exchange the knowledge for better future for our next generation. Thank you very much. Dr. Puri, with your permission, I'm going to take one minute to welcome warmly Dr. Madani. We look forward to seeing you in India, and all of us will be very open to collaborating. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We hope so soon. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for this, uh, Dr. Reddy. In fact, uh, that is our whole intention uh, to bring the key stakeholders together and uh, have business done in the benefit of both countries. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Almadani. And uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, in India, from the public and the private sector, we'll be able to engage with the Waterfalls Initiative 
in a very substantive way. Thank you. We are doing not too bad on time, but I may just uh, like to you know mention uh, all the presentations so far have been excellent, and we have a few other presentations lined up. If I may request uh, all the speakers to try and keep their presentation within five to seven minutes, ideally five minutes, so that you know we can uh, we can close the session on time. Thank you so much. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Girish Krishnamurti who is the CEO and Director of Tata Medical and Diagnostics, Tata MD. His contribution in the transformation at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences was lauded by the Honorable Prime Minister of India as the most successful Digital India Initiative of 2016. It, is, it would be extremely interesting to hear about the Feluda paper-based COVID-19 test as it is extremely topical. Over to you, Mr. Krishnamurti. Thank you, and uh, I'll quickly share my presentation. Are you able to see my presentation? Mr. Girish, we have shared your presentation. You may go ahead. Okay. Your Excellencies from UAE as well as from India and all the senior leaders from UAE and India and all the experts and attending this conference from the healthcare sector. Ladies and gentlemen, and my special thanks to Sister Sangeeta Reddy. It's a great privilege and honor to introduce Tata's innovation along with the Indian government on the Feluda platform. Just before getting into the Feluda platform, when the pandemic onset happened end of January and early February, we at Tata embarked on a journey on twofold. We very clearly recognized this when four people tested positive in Kerala, this is going to be some kind of an impact. But we didn't realize the real vast impact that time, but we have started getting ready. We worked out with few research institutions in the United States to understand how do we really get ready for testing. And that is the time I personally started involving in getting the CRISPR test, a future technology, genomic based test for COVID. But fortunately, in the month of April, we had a great moment in India where we were able to test in the IGIB lab, part of CSIR a successful, a unique way of using genomics for the COVID. We started working together, and in 100 days, significantly, we developed a product. Today, we call that as Tata Check, powered by Feluda. We believe this can become a new gold standard in COVID testing. Moving on to the next slide. So that the Tata MD check the Feluda platform. A major difference is it is working on a CRISPR based technique, which is traditionally used for editing the genome. Here we use it for sensing the genome. While sensing the genome, there is a mechanism where they cut the genome and sense the virus. Whereas here in the RNA protein, the viral protein, we bind it. That's a very, very unique way of thinking from the scientific angle. Taking the science out, what are the benefits in the current pandemic it can bring in? The one is it is simple, reliable, and highly scalable. You can stay on the slide, please. Previous slide itself. You stay on the previous slides. I will, I, will, I will complete in five to six minutes, and I will move the slide quickly. And Currently, a predominant standard, gold standard, is an RT-PCR test we use, which requires an expensive machine called an RT-PCR machine, or QRT-PCR machine. This test doesn't require that. It is, the turnaround time is very quick. In 45 minutes, you can complete the viral test, a nucleic acid test, and more importantly, a tampered proof result. You have an audit trial on every result through a paper strip. And moving on to the next slide. 
there are several people globally are looking at this test very very closely as tata we have set up a very large plant to produce a large volume not only to keep up for the india demand for the whole global demand and there are a lot of automation is coming in in next 2 3 months time i believe that we will be in a position to handle from india as well as for indian demand as well as the global demand moving on to the next slide please so just to introduce the test it's very simple there is a simple thermocycler which is an heating machine which is required in the lab and other than that it is a standard reaction method the innovation is there in the last step which we call as a crispr reaction and which is operated through an anti, uh, uh, artificial intelligence model where you take an image and then image calculate the result and the whole product currently is been tested on several thousands of real life sample in india uh, before the government of, government of india approval now currently it is in a major production mode we are looking to offer this to the world by end of this month and that is from that point of time we will start moving significantly a large volume for the world to be available and lot of laboratories and hospitals are in conversation with us not only from india globally we have various interest is coming from uae and this test will be available very very soon for your country moving on so as i said it is a very simple reliable test and very interestingly we are working on the next version of the same test which can be tested with a saliva and then there is no rna extraction is required it's not only going to reduce the time of the test to less than 20 minutes it is going to reduce the cost significantly also from the data science perspective we are working on a very very interesting innovation which is a data science based pooling that means for every 1000 sample you just need to do only 100 test maximum of and you do the 100 test take the 1000 sample do 100 test but publish the result for all the 1000 people and these are all going to be a really really a great breakthrough coming from the indian science community and tata is proud to be part of it and bringing it to the world while talking about this test as tata group we have been very very closely engaged with the government of india in several pandemic response as one of that we introduced in the month of april a concept called minimum testing and maximum intelligence a one district with about 2 million population we are able to exactly test only 1000 people and then predict exactly what is going to happen in that particular district currently as we are coming out of the lockdown the to stimulate the economic engine we have a special solutions for factories special solutions for schools colleges universities to get back to the work and more importantly for sporting events and other events interesting enough today in the uae it's it's the demonstrate the cooperation of the two government and the two country our the, the one of the best brand of our sporting event is ipl is conducted in uae today and we at tata is very proud that we are associated with uae's ipl and managing the covid safety for one of the team and where we have a tremendous knowledge developed not only testing overall contact tracing how do we really manage with the minimum impact for the people without we shield everybody and also cocoon every person who is healthy to ensure that a uh, business continuity happens at the same time protect of the well being of people we have developed this model in our jamshedpur factory where we have a large tata steel factory we manage every employees through this model that model is also available for the world to consume so tata is along with the indian government as well as putting several initiative especially to respond into the healthcare sector to create a proactive connected continuous technology based near home patient experience to ensure better health for the future thank you for the opportunity this afternoon so much mr krishnamurthy it is indeed a pleasure to hear from you and also to learn about the amazing indian innovation to address a global challenge it is a pleasure to have amongst us padmashri dr azad mupen the founder chairman and md of aster dm healthcare aster dm healthcare is a well known healthcare service provider and amongst 
the fact that they have several facilities in different countries, including 13 hospitals in India. Dr. Mupen has also been instrumental in major contributions in the field of medical education for medicine professionals from nursing and pharmacy courses. Dr. Azad Mupen, please. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And uh, uh, His Excellency uh, Pawan Kapoor, the Honorable Ambassador of India, His Excellency uh, Humayd Al Khatami, the Director General of DHA, and uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Ahmed Al Benna, Ambassador to India from UAE, uh, Dr. Amin Al Amidi, and uh, uh, Ms. Sangeeta Reddy of Fiki, and all other distinguished uh, uh, guests, uh, the speakers and uh, delegates. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Puri, for that uh, very lavish uh, uh, introduction. Uh, we have been lucky, I should say that. I came here 33 years back as a doctor. And in the 33 years, this country, the visionary rulers of this country, the generous people of this country have helped us to come to this level where now we are an organization which is uh, 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 20,000 people strong, present in eight, seven countries, and mostly in UAE and India. So we know what is required for the development of the healthcare relationships, strategic and all, all of us know about that, but in the healthcare, what are the opportunities? We have a large number of institutions in both countries. So I see huge opportunities in three areas. One is definitely the investments. There is significant opportunity for investment by UAE into uh, for in investment into India by the UAE citizens as well as companies. India requires huge infrastructure and 1.3 billion people, and there is no dearth of opportunity. The demand supply gap is so huge and this is one among the most potent areas where there could be investments coming in. So either alone or in partnership with the existing institutions like uh, like Apollo or like ours, we are a listed company in India. There is huge opportunity for investment into India by the UAE citizens, by the UAE government. So that is one of the most important thing. And of course, people like us who are here, we invest both here as well as in India. And even for Indian investors, there is opportunity for further investment in the GCC and UAE. So that's the number one. The second one that I see is in the area of the people movement. There is significant opportunity for the Indian professionals to come to this country, either for permanently for getting job and uh, being part of uh, whatever is happening here and in the area of healthcare because there is more and more of requirement for advanced care in this country. Earlier, it was all basic primary, secondary care, but now we see that large number of uh, tertiary to quaternary care, like the organ transplants and all are happening. The issue here is that there are only very few cases which require such treatment. So we love to attract patients from other countries by increasing the infrastructure here. So this is a, a chicken and egg situation where you must have more of facilities so that people from other Middle East countries come here because their best destination for healthcare is UAE because they will find it very convenient to be here. So we have to make that infrastructure for which we require very experienced and skilled people who India can supply. And those people coming here will have significant improvement in the medical tourism that is happening to this country. And the third thing I think is the travel of patients from this country into India for treatment. India, if you look at, it is only one fifth the cost of this country or the Western countries when you look at. So there is a significant uh, advantage of people from any of the GCC countries going into India for the benefit of that uh, tariff differential. At the same time, you get the best treatment that is available anywhere in the world. So we have hospital groups which are providing large number of facilities from primary to quaternary care, and we can definitely utilize that. So I don't want to uh, go into areas where uh, others have already touched because of the want of time. Finally, one thing which I would like to say is that 
in the area of innovation india is uh, far uh, uh, approaching far ahead and uae also is focusing in that area we had recently the opportunity when uae opened up for the israeli connection india already has that we have been in consultation with uh, at least three hospitals from israel for bringing new technology which can come to uae as well as to india so huge opportunity in the area of innovation and advanced medical care so looking at the future there is significant opportunity in all these areas healthcare for india and uae to participate thank you very much for giving me this opportunity may god bless thank you so much dr mopen uh, your contribution to healthcare both in uae and india is very well appreciated thank you we have amongst us another eminent personality dr shamshir vayalil founder chairman and man managing director of vps healthcare which is a uae based healthcare group with presence in uae oman saudi arabia and india may i now request dr shamshir vayalil to please address the gathering bismillahirrahmanirrahim rahim rahim good morning excellency uh ambassador of india in ua uh, excellency banna uh, excellency katami excellency dr amin uh, dr sangeeta uh, dr madani and thanks uh, consul general for giving me this opportunity uh, i always believe that uh, there is a natural hedge between uh, india and uae uh, and uh, any relationship can be defined the beauty can be defined uh during a time of crisis and 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 this was clearly demonstrated uh during this recent uh, uh pandemic world we have seen uh the collaborations at its highest and even before that we have reached the the the, the pinnacle of this relationship where we had bilateral visits especially among the leaderships and i think now it is our turn as a businessman to further explore the depth of relationship i think we haven't even scratched the surface we we have so much to do i would like to avoid repetition but i think uh, collaboration uh, partnership is the way forward i think uh, india is a huge marketplace uh, we have uh, very large providers like apollo uh, and uh, with with whom we are currently having discussions to collaborate on areas like oncology so uh, i think moving forward we we can have so much of resource sharing i think research has been uh, a area where we can do much especially with people like tata consultancy here uh i think we could be the next force moving forward and i think the combination with uh, the, the the proximity uh, the, the the sharing of values we both talked about how much we help others and uh, this is one of the areas where i think we can uh, we can you know uh, share a lot of thoughts and uh, i think call for action is what is required uh, pharmaceutical uh, i would like to uh, thank dr amin alami excellency dr amin who has been uh, in the forefront uh, uh, to help uh, our pharmaceutical company in emergency use authorization for hydroxy and favipiravir which is undergoing stability so i think uh, we are talking about formulations but there are areas like active pharmaceutical ingredients which uh, uh, we have a beautiful downstream products which come from the petroleum uh, which is most commonly used uh, in uh, manufacturing of active pharmaceutical ingredients uh, we are currently having uh, collaborations with multiple companies multiple pharmaceutical companies from india uh, we are now uh, going to focus on specialties which are cancer and even the uh, pharmaceutical side life saving medications which we would like to uh, have more and more indian company presence in uh, uae talking about medical tourism my colleague dr asad mohan talked about the prominence and i think uh, uh, the beauty is in approaching this as a platform for people to experience the ecosystem because we have uh, so much of things in common and i think we can uh, definitely raise that uh, into the next level uh, we have a company which is listed in uh, dubai financial markets uh, which is called as amanat and basically investing into health and education which is uh, having a, a, a paid up capital of 2.5 billion dirhams uh, we're very keen to look at india investments and uh, 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 based on the opportunities we could assess a lot of uh, uh, investments into uh, education and healthcare 
So I think uh, I would like to echo my colleagues and uh, I think lots need to be done. Uh, these are the platforms where we can mold opinion and organizations like FIKI uh, can play a pivotal role uh, in defining the, the next steps of the relationship. Uh, I don't think there is any time to lose. Uh, the pandemic has taught us how uh, we are together uh, better than how we can, uh, you know, uh, unite at this point of time. So I would like to thank all of you for uh, giving me this opportunity and looking forward for collaborations uh, in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Shamshir. Uh, really helpful and uh, really important uh, for VPS Healthcare to look at more opportunities in India. Thank you. Our next speaker is a truly gifted young achiever, Ms. Sophia Fezel, director of KEF Holdings. KEF Healthcare has set up its first flagship project, Metra Hospital in India. It's a very unique project, and I'm sure she'll talk a little bit about it, especially in the way it was constructed using KEF Infra's off-site manufacturing technology. Ms. Sophia Fezel. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, just a second, I'm sharing my screen. So, KEF Holdings has been established in the UAE for the past 25 years now. We've been in oil and gas infrastructure investments, and our latest venture has been in healthcare. And the reason we got into healthcare is that we saw that healthcare today is not patient centric, it's not equitable or sustainable. And if it is patient centric, it's usually not equitable. If it is equitable, then it's not sustainable. And if you look at the world, uh, when you think of some of the best facilities, you think of Cleveland Clinic in the US, you think of Thailand or Germany. But the reality is only about 2% of the world population can actually afford to go to these, place, uh, to, play, to these places to get treated. And that needs to change. And that's what we're doing with our flagship hospital, Metro. Um, the whole healthcare industry, the system is centuries old, but it's not patient centric enough. And that's what we're trying to do with our hospital and our healthcare vision as well. The first, one of the biggest challenges a patient faces is that it's becoming too expensive to get treatment. And one of the main causes is that the infrastructure cost of building these hospitals are just getting going up and up um, all over the world. Um, has, you know, it takes about four to seven years to build a hospital. Usually budgets are overrun, quality is okay, and it's not designed with the patient in mind. So what we've done, what we have done is that, you know, taking these We've built catalog hospitals. We've standardized, industrialized, and commoditized um, healthcare design. And this brings down the cost because we've designed for prefab construction. Uh, every time you build a hospital, you don't need to reinvent the wheel and go to a designer, an MEP, an architect, and get do the whole process all over again. Because we have these guidelines already, everything can actually be pre-designed and pre-engineered, and you just have to customize the finishes according to whichever country or city you are in. Um, so this is an example of, you know, from a 16 bed to a 500 bed hospital, we have catalogs that are already in place. So all you have to do is pick which uh, unit you want, how to stack it and pick the renders. And within a few months, you can actually get a fully finished hospital. And that's what we've done in Cali get those. This is Maitre Hospital, our flagship in Kerala. It's 220 bed, but it is designed for 500 bed. We already have the drawings in place. Um, it's a tertiary care, 450,000 uh, square foot in just built in just 18 months. And from the design itself, um, when you walk into a hospital, we didn't want the patient to feel like they are in a hospital. Um, we wanted it to feel like they're essentially coming into a hotel with a medical facility attached. Um, Kerala is known for its nature, so we tried to make sure that a lot of the nature that we could incorporate inside as, as well. Um, these are our rooms. Again, we forget that healthcare is also a service industry. Um, to be, you know, a patient compromises on the service because they are coming to a place where they're getting healed. But we're trying to teach the patient that you know you should get the best care regardless of which strata of society you're from, um, and that's what we're doing here. Even in the ICUs, we have 52 individual ICUs. Uh, when you're in your most critical, you don't want to see the person next to you in the same state. 
even for infection control, it's much better to have individual ICUs, and that's what we have. So that was from the infrastructure point. Next week, question the clinical care. How can we give uniform care across all the doctors within the facility? Uh, we looked around, um, again, we compare ourselves to Cleveland quite a bit. And Cleveland has an excellent way of, you know, when you go to a Cleveland Clinic Hospital, you know that any doctor you go to, you will receive the same service or same level of clinical care. Um, so what we did was we actually got two doctors in Cleveland on our board for four years. Um, they worked with us to train our doctors to create the clinical care pathway. So any doctor you come to in Mater Hospital as well, you receive the same level of um, clinical care. So that's our hospital in Kerala. The next phase that we are planning is we perfected the patient experience within a hospital. How can we take that same experience and expand our reach? And that has been a challenge for not just us, for most healthcare providers, is how do you expand the same clinical care to millions of people? Um, again, we did our research, we looked at different cities, and we actually found that one of the root causes of why this is difficult is that Preventive care is not given enough importance. Uh, a patient goes to a doctor or hospital when the sicknesses happen, and already the cost is you know, that much higher. Uh, the second is within the system itself from primary, secondary, and tertiary, um, it's not efficient enough where, for example, in India, if you have a headache, you would still might go to a specialist. Um, it's not necessary that that person has to travel all the way to a hospital, or maybe a primary care physician was enough, but also the specialist time is not used efficiently. And the second is technology isn't used enough in the sector as well. Um, you know, I can order food from my phone and it comes in five minutes. I can get a cab in one minute. Um, that type of penetration hasn't happened um, in the healthcare segment. So that's what we're doing in this phase right now is we're seeing can we create a platform, a system where based on what the needs are of a specific country or a town, um, can we develop services and provide that? The problem is not that there aren't enough facilities or there aren't enough technologies, everything exists. The problem is that the integration is not there and it's not a seamless experience for the patient. Um, so this is what we call our Maitra Care Network in a snapshot. Um, so to start with, you know, we will have Maitra Health Centers in each city that we are in. Rather than going and building a full-fledged hospital, uh, which will only increase costs, not just for us, but also for the patient, uh, these mini health centers essentially will help you prevent a lot of your illnesses, but also have primary physicians there. The next is we will have a primary care, care network. Um, you know, if you go to a town, you have hundreds of primary care physicians. Can we create a platform for them where they are trained to a standard so any patient who has a cold or flu can just check the app who's around in my area that I can go visit. So that's what we're building right now. The second is connected health for the patient. Um, once you're out of a hospital, it does not mean that you can stop, you stop communication with your doctor or the nurses. Um, so we are building an app where that relationship is um, still uh, fostered even after you leave a hospital. And the next is with the secondary care network. Um, all these cities have hospitals already, but for example, in lower tier cities, you might not have intensivists in the ICU, or you might not have specialists that um, can help. So with tele-ICU and telemedicine services, um, that's how we're connecting and leveraging um, these secondary care hospitals. And the last is home care. Uh, when you're in your most critical state or when you're feeling really ill, you shouldn't have to go to a hospital. The doctor should come to you. Um, it used to happen decades ago. We're bringing that concept back. Uh, and overall, this is what we're doing with the Maitra Care Network. We're saying that there's so much out there that exists. We don't need to keep building. Um, you can actually optimize all these resources seamlessly together. Um, and this is the way forward for healthcare. These traditional business models have to move with the times, especially since COVID. It's only accelerated the adoption of all of this. Um, and that's what we're looking at with KEF Healthcare and specifically Maitra Care Network. It's not just for India, but also UAE, for example. Um, we have great facilities here um, that are being underutilized. Can we work with these hospitals, these partners, to bring in the best in technology to make sure that every, everyone is uh, utilizing their resources best. Um, and that's what we're doing. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Ms. Sophia. An excellent presentation indeed. As part of this session in the morning, uh, one of our speakers, the CEO of National Health Authority, Dr. Indu Bhushan, was unable to join because he was uh, called for a meeting by the health minister. Uh, we have the additional CEO of the National Health Authority who would be joining in the subsequent session. One of the presentations which was uh, earlier planned for this session, which is by Invest India, uh, by Ms. Kalika Liki, has been moved to the next session. Uh, in keeping with uh, closing the session on time. Now I would uh, be requesting both ambassadors to give their closing remarks on this session. May I now first invite His Excellency Dr. Albana uh, to please give his closing remarks, please. Thank you very much, Your uh, Excellency. Uh, it was uh, indeed uh, a great opportunity uh, to to hear from the expert in the industry, whether on the public sector or the private sector. Uh, our um, Director General of the uh, Dubai Health Authority has laid down the main general uh, perspectives of, of, uh, of the India-UAE uh, healthcare uh, cooperation. Uh, our uh, Ministry of Health, uh, Dr. Amin Al Amiri, uh, the Under Secretary, made a great presentation in terms of the facts and figures. As a matter of fact, some of the figures I should admit that it was new to me, and I'm sure I will benefit a lot uh, from it. Uh, from our private sector, the initiative, the waterfall initi waterfalls initiative is quite uh, a big thing and I think we need to collaborate and uh, the expert in the field has heard uh, that. Uh, the private sector, whether uh, the Tata representative or Dr. Shabshir or Dr. Uh, Azad Mopin or uh, uh, the rest of, of, uh, of uh, the uh, healthcare uh, sector, uh, specifically uh, the words of wisdom of uh, the Apollo uh, Hospital uh, Chair, uh, uh, was a great uh, thing for us, I think. And uh, this platform, I really uh, thank you, uh, Consul General, for all the efforts you have put in uh, organizing this healthcare conference. Uh, and I would like also to thank uh, His Excellency, uh, the ambassador, my colleague, the ambassador of India to UAE for his support uh, in reference to that, uh, in reference to the uh, today's conference and to the overall uh, India-UAE bilaterals. Uh, I have learned a lot. Uh, the exchange of uh, knowledge and exchange of information is quite important, especially at, at this stage that we are, uh, we are going through. And um, from all the figures and from all the facts we have heard from both, as I mentioned, public and private, it, it, uh, it shows the importance of the relation, the importance of the relationship UAE India and the importance of the relationship UAE India and the strategic relationship that UAE enjoys with India and India enjoys with UAE and I think this is a common goal to all of us and we need to work on that to further enhance that special relationship. I thank you all for having me on this platform and I'll be more than glad to uh, be part of any similar future platforms. Thank you. Thank you so much, Excellency, and uh, thank you so much for all your support to our various endeavors, and we will carry this forward. This is just a beginning, and we will continue with the work on building partnerships. May I now request Ambassador Pawan Kapoor to please make his closing remarks.
Thank you, Aman. And uh, let me first start by thanking uh, Dr. Albana, His Excellency Dr. Albana, for his uh, continuous support in this whole process. But I would actually like to start even by just saying that uh, it is uh, a great pleasure indeed uh, to have heard uh, such an array of views uh, from such top people, both on the UAE and the Indian side. And I must say, uh, as Dr. Albana said, I think Dr. Uh, Amin Almiri's uh, presentation, including the uh, very detailed uh, figures, etc., was um, an eye-opener uh, also for me. Uh, and I think that uh, you know the stage is set for uh, you know taking this collaboration forward. Um, I started by saying that you know we've had uh, uh, you know tremendous cooperation during the pandemic from the highest levels between our countries at the government level. Uh, we've now heard from the uh, private sector uh, also. On, 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 on the Indian side, or rather both sides, although we have people, uh, you know, sort of um, straddling both ends here, uh, thanks to Dr. Shamshir and Dr. Azad Mupen, who uh, follow things on, on, at both ends. But also, uh, I must say that uh, I, I take, uh, um, I would like to build on what Dr. Reddy said uh, when she used the words uh, saying that, you know, we have these shared values and shared goals, uh, because I think particularly uh, as she spelt out in the current uh, stage of the pandemic, uh, this is extremely true. And even as you heard uh, representatives from uh, both sides talk about uh, the objectives, uh, both looking at attracting investments, the concept of medical tourism, the investments being made on in medical devices or in healthcare systems. These are definite synergies and the two countries can come together uh, through these specific uh, suggestions that have been made. And I want to make a, a specific reference, although I spoke in my initial remarks also about the uh, innovation coming in. And I think I must uh, uh, thank uh, Mr. Girish Krishnamurti in particular for the uh, details that he provided on this um, CRISPR-based Faluda test, which I think has a tremendous scope uh, going forward. So all these uh, opportunities are, are very clearly uh, laid out. And I think uh, as you go ahead, Aman, with the, follow with the further sessions during the day, you will get into more nitty gritty details. But uh, I think uh, just the opportunities that lie ahead now the, um, the you know sort of the the question is how we can take advantage for them of them and as uh, i i would of course join uh, dr albana in suggesting that uh, we are there to facilitate uh, any uh, further specific collaboration uh, efforts that are being undertaken uh, both at the g2g uh, level or even within the private sector wherever we can assist but uh, you know the whole idea of this platform is to bring everyone together and see how we can uh, harvest some of these opportunities uh, which have been even made more stark by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you all uh, for your for your tremendous participation and for your presentations, for the views and suggestions that you've made. And I can uh, assure you that we have taken well note of them. And uh, I'm sure that uh, with, with Aman's uh, uh, great diligence and efforts in this regard, we will be able to take this forward. Uh, as we go along. Thank you very much indeed. Namaste. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, now, as we come uh, to the conclusion of this first session on the uh, today's UA India Healthcare Conference 2020, I would like to thank all the speakers, all the participants, distinguished guests, excellencies. Uh, just like to also acknowledge the presence of uh, DG Fiki, Mr. Dilip Chennai, and uh, of course, uh, thanking everyone uh, for very, very valuable inputs, for your support, for your passion to building the relationship between UA and India in the healthcare sector. Thank you so much.